Hi, I am Maria Drushkova of Natural Math, interviewing three experienced math circle leaders. In this video, I ask them to share about adapting activities from other math circles. It's interesting that two of them said they don't know as much about what's going on in other circles. And uh, the third said, my question does not make sense as asked because she doesn't think of it this way. So what you want to see, what they do have to say, it's always interesting. It's more empowering to the kids if we don't know everything about the topic. We need to know enough about it to present it and guide things a little bit. But we might not necessarily even know what the outcome is going to be. And she explain, explains the joy of that really well. In, in in her writing. So she might post about, I did this activity, and it might be something I never even heard of before, but the way she explains how she, with the group, she just becomes, morphs into a member of the group, um, is really, really exciting. Um, the other so, time I had that feeling that I could really do this actually um, came from a book, um, and it's by um, a Russian man, his last name is Vonkin, I can't remember his first name right now, um, and I think it was written about 30 years ago, and maybe three years ago, a math um, circle person I know, um, Dave, Dave Ockley, handed me this book, and he said, you've got to read this book. This guy did exactly what you're trying to do. Um, I'm but looking I, to the side. I, I think I have it on my shelf. I have it on my shelf, too. I was looking for it before, but, and, and, but I was just too busy to read the book, and then... Um, Finally, a few years later, this past spring, when I started to really work more with younger kids, like four, five, six-year-olds, I said, I'd better read this book. And I read it, and I found that what David told me was right. Like, he sounded like he was doing exactly what I'm trying to do, but he has um, a lot more depth of um, knowledge in terms of mathematical content, and he documented it so remarkably well with which things worked and which things didn't and why they might have that I felt like I could just jump into that book and be part of that math circle too. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so, so um, do you, and just the opposite question, do you ever feel you kind of like what people do, but you don't feel like doing it yourself? It makes you uncomfortable somehow imagining doing that. Um. And I don't mean things you dislike. Things right. so, someone does something good, but not I'm for not you. That task, right? um, the one, the one math circle in, um, that I would, uh, that I always would like to emulate is what Bob and Ellen Kaplan do in in Boston. I read their books. I've seen them teach. I've visited their math circle. I've been trained by them. Um, and I, I feel like the way they interact with kids is exact, almost exactly the same way I've always done that. So when the first time I ever saw them teach, I was kind of like, oh, they teach just like I do. But they, they have, first of all, so many years of experience teaching math that they have really deep conceptual knowledge um, that's already in them that I, that I lack. I'm, I'm kind of like learning as I go. Um, and the other thing is that they're, they both have really strong backgrounds in the classics and can relate anything mathematical uh, um, to significant events in humanity. And it makes everything come so alive. So I don't have that kind of um, background knowledge, although... <laughs> I'm pretty on top of popular culture, so I feel in my math circles I'm kind of doing the same thing with with current pop culture. But um, I would like to make things I do really feel timeless, and I think that's what the Kaplans do. They just remove time from the question. Interesting. Interesting. Well, uh, modern culture has its pluses, especially for, for young children. Right. For young kids, the, the, th the classical things wouldn't even matter, although I have done things from... Oh, they matter. Go with them. And they, you know, Plato's Cave and things like that, they find it really, really interesting. But right, it doesn't resonate with them the way, say, um, Harry Potter does. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, the modern, the modern, the, there is a difference. It's a very interesting comparison to me, so uh, I immediately want to start discussing it. <laughs> what what classics do, how they uh, weave this uh, timelessness with pre past generations, but mm -hmm. what the modern, um, modern uh, pieces do is they have the strong sense of immediate belonging to communities. Right. Right. So your value of creating little collaborative communities uh, aligns actually with choosing modern uh, pieces. It, it's it's like this. Um, you know, we have these circle on the road meetings, which by the way we're not having this year. We're going to have next year. But um, people get together and share their activities. Um, the feeling I have when I see something is, is why, did I, why didn't I think of that? I've done so many things like it. This is going to work. Somebody showed me something where you, you tie kids' hands together and they and it's too complicated to explain, but it, it, they put on, a, sh they put on a, a, a t shirt upside down and backwards. And the challenge is to, um, to do it, to, 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 to make it so that it's presentable in public, but you tie their hands together, the left hand to the right hand. And what they have to do is pull it through itself. And so it's a topological problem. Uh, not a simple one, and the kids have fun doing it. But somebody showed me this, and they said, I got big t All they said was, quote, unquote, I got big t-shirts where you can tie their hands together, and they have to reverse it by pulling it through. And all of a sudden, I could see it happening. And you know that, that kind of thing is wonderful. Um, what's another example? Sometimes, sometimes people come and tell me things that they thought were wonderful that I didn't think were wonderful, and I have to try it out myself. Um, so I have to go on blind faith. And usually it works out, but I have to figure out how it works out. I can't just listen to the person. Um, I don't. So I don't have a, a wide, broad knowledge of what other people are doing in the class, in the in the math circles. So I'm not I'm not good at answering this question, Maria. Do I ever see people doing something wonderful and go, I couldn't do it? I'm sure that will happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, Sometimes I, 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 I look at something and say, how's that going to work? How are the kids, there's so much, uh, so much they have to write or so much they have to get into or so complicated. How is it going to work? I don't see how it's going to work. And sometimes I try it and the first time it doesn't work. Um, and if it doesn't work after three times, generally I give up and I say, this is not for me. This is, this is somebody else's activity. Um, because teaching really is very, there's, there's a lot that's idiosyncratic about it. Uh, I mean, I don't really think about it that way, to be honest. Um, hmm. I, I don't... I, I think there are definitely people that um, I enjoy collaborating with and mm -hmm. getting ideas from, and I definitely have benefited from lots of amazing math circle leaders. And Can you um, name I, a couple? Is that you? Well, see, the problem is, of course, I'm going to name some, and then it will be like all these other people that I haven't mentioned who are also great. Oh, that. okay. <laughs> Um, I mean, Bob and Ellen Kaplan were my first mentors in Math Circle Land, so I, I have to, you know, say them. But then, you know, Tatiana Shubin and Sam Vanderveld and Tom Davis and Brandy Wiegers and Dave Ockley and James Tanton and Tom Hall, By Hart, Gordon Hamilton, Bob Sachs, Joshua Zucker, Mark Saul, Paul Zeitz, Gabriella Pinter, um, Phil Yaskin, and there's so many more. Anyway, lots. <laughs> so it's difficult. And it's not always that I... I don't really worry about it, whether I would lead a circle like they do or not. I just always get ideas from lots of people. Whether I certainly won't be leading a circle that's just like somebody else, that won't be possible. But um, I might. It's definitely true that it's possible that I might my, my style might resemble somebody more than somebody else. But I don't think that's a. I don't think of it. You, you don't do it this way. You you just arrange ideas from here and from there and develop them on your own. Is it what you're saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the next question is quite the opposite, and I definitely don't ask for names or anything. Just in general, do you ever see a circle or an activity and say this is 
I like it, but I don't even know how to start or how could they do it or that I'm afraid of doing it or I'll well, never do okay. it. Well, let me give you an example um, of a circle that uh, there, there are always topics like that, actually. So, for example, and some of the, sometimes these come from people's circles and sometimes they don't. Um, but, for example, uh, Sophie Germain um, mm -hmm. did all that work on Claudney plates. And I have done, um, before I started doing math circles, I did an activity um, where students, where the Girl Scouts that were exploring the Claudney patterns using a frequency generator and a Claudney plate. And we talked about frequency versus amplitude and per you know, period of oscillation. And we did that kind of thing, but it was more teaching them about trigonometry, not really. Um, I couldn't come up with a way to make it an open, uh, you know, a genuine ex exploration. And the difficulty is, I honestly, I still don't know how enough. Well, let me just go all the way. I, I don't know enough about the mathematics myself. Myself still, I'm still learning more about the mathematics of that topic. There are whole bunches of things I don't understand very well. And then, secondly, could I come up with a way to really do that with students? I'm not sure. Um, the same thing with my own field of research. I'm in um, my PhD dissertation was in mathematical neuroscience. So systems of differential equations that model neurons in the hippocampus. And I've approached that several ways. I've done it um, like having students explore qualitative differential equations where they, you know, look for the null clines qualitatively um, and look at sort of the overall pattern of behaviors that can happen. Um, but that's hard to do with younger students in a meaningful circle way. Um, and then I've also tried I definitely talked to students about um, how neurons work, and we act out a neuron and that kind of thing. But again, it's hard to take it from there to a, uh, to a to get it to the point where they are actually running with questions about it. Um, it's really <clears throat> it would be difficult for me to do that. I might be able to take individual older students there, but I can't think about a I haven't been able to think about a good way to uh, make that into a circle. So uh, there are some topics where the topic is mathematically interesting and the topic is mathematically valuable, but is it a good circle topic? Uh, you haven't figured it out yet. And of course, because it's experimental, until someone succeeds in making it a circle right. topic, you can't say it will never be a good that's topic. That's right. It could very well become one, and that's just it. There are several topics that I wasn't able to figure out at first, and later I figured out good ways into them. So, mm -hmm. But I want to ask a slightly different question here. Have you ever seen people uh, leading a circle and children seem to be, it seems meaningful for children, it works, you just don't know how to do it yourself, what they um, are doing? No, I, I don't, like again, I don't think, think of it that way. Okay. I just, I don't ever try to pattern what I'm doing after somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it would be, it, it can happen that I'm not particularly interested in the topic. That has happened. Where I'm like, oh, that's nice. I'm glad they did that. <laughs> but I wouldn't choose that topic. Um, so, but I haven't ever, you know, I, I'm not really in the position, if I like a topic, I'm going to find a way to do something with it. You'll it, try. Right. Sure. <laughs> Audacity. Uh, so, yeah, sure. I mean, there's no, I don't really think of it that way, like, oh, I don't know. I can't do it just like they would. I don't try to do things just like anybody else would. I don't. I don't think there's. I'm not everybody else. I'm, do you, you know, think it's in general a good idea for people to focus on topics and how you like them, and to to go with what really to, to, in. to to interested? Yeah. Yeah, and there's, usually there's some sort of balance between what the kids are interested in, what you're interested in, some sort of overlap there. Mm -hmm. um. That's all for now. In the next video in the series, the three leaders will talk about documenting their math circles.